Okay, so here we are working again on this Kincaid that I started um, a few weeks ago, maybe maybe a month ago, and I wound up not being able to work on it because I live in Georgia, and just recently we had Hurricane Helene to come through. We were not expecting Hurricane Helene to hit Georgia because it was supposed to turn and go further west of us. But at the last minute, we realized that that was not going to happen. And so Hurricane Helene hit Augusta, Georgia with a vengeance and, um, and other places as well. And so it's been a very sombering thing that took place. It's probably the worst weather thing that, that I've ever experienced. And when it was over and my daughter and I was, were actually in the hallway for quite a while when we realized that, that it was coming through, we woke up at around 3 a.m. and realized that things were picking up in a way that we really didn't want them to. And so after a little bit, we moved into the hallway and then around 3.45, 4 o'clock, we could tell that, that things had gotten progressively worse. And so we wound up moving into the closet at around 4 a.m. And we stayed in the closet for about an hour because we could hear all kinds of things hitting and bamming and I guess basically being thrown around. And so when we finally came out of the closet, when all of that stopped, we went to the, to the back door. And when we went to the back door, it had been snatched open, which is how bad it was. And we still couldn't see out because it was 5 o'clock, so it was still dark. And so about 6.30, 7 o'clock, it was daylight, and we woke up to just trees everywhere, just thrown everywhere. Um, probably about six down trees in, in our backyard. One very nearly hitting our roof, but coming down this, one of the side bedrooms windows instead. Um, a big heavy metal table thrown out into our backyard that we can barely even lift. And then we will, when we were finally able to get out of the house and to run around a bit, the devastation to our neighbors' homes was just unbelievable. Some homes flattened to the ground with trees, four and five trees that had fallen in, into the houses. One of my best friends, a tree, she lives in a two-story house and a tree came all the way down from the top of her house to the bottom of her house so that you can actually stand at the front of her yard and look all the way through to the back of her yard and see the from the see the backyard from the front yard. Um, some people died in this. So one of the things that that I was doing for the ten days that we were at without power, and some people were without power even longer than we were, 14, 15, 16 days without electricity. So one of the things that that I did during that time, one for therapy, because I needed it after that, and then two, to keep myself busy while we didn't have you know, power and other things that we could do, was to color multiple Kincaids, and I may include those at, at the end so that you can see them. But what I did want to do was to come back and to be able to videotape this particular coloring that we were all coloring together. And as you can see, um, we had already completed the grass here and the horses that we talked about and some of the flowering, the walkway, the roof of this cottage, some of the greenery going up to the side and off to the side, um, the blue skies up here. And then I've got to fill some of the blue skies and white into this crepe myrtle tree. 
And so what I thought I would do today is to go ahead and work out this section of green in the trees. And I might do this highlighted area of grass in here. And I may do some of this dark shading in, in this area. So we'll just see how much we get done. If we don't get all of it done, um, we can always come back and, and do more. And so I wanted to use for this lighter green, I wanted to use this color on this color card. And my daughter did this for me and I'm so thankful that she did. It makes it so much easier to choose your colors. But I thought I would start with this G21. So let me see. Well, I thought I had pulled out G21. Did I not? Let's see, G17. Maybe I had decided to do G17. But I thought I had decided to do G21. So let me see if I can find G21 here. Because I think that's more of the color of this green up here. So let's see, G21. You know, you can fast forward all this if you need to, to get to, here's G21. So this is the one that I was looking for. I'm gonna lay these over here and this here. So this is the color that I wanted to use here for this. And I'm just going to start filling in this lighter, more muted, muted green. is about the color of what we see here. Actually, it's a little darker, but I don't think I have one that's lighter than, than this. So we'll just go with this. As long as you have the pretty close to the correct gradations, if your colors are not exactly, it's not really going to, to hurt anything. So I hope that the weather has found you much better off than, than it found us over the past few weeks with everything that, that has been going on. Like I said, very, very sombering. And then, you know, in our, our area up in Asheville, well, that's not our area, but I mean, you know, that, that Hurricane Helene has affected, has it affected about five states? I believe that Asheville actually received, you know, the worst of the weather than, than any of us did. And I know that for quite a while they were still looking for people who were missing and I think in our area, we, we had maybe 31 people who passed away, who, who didn't make it through that storm. And um, I think in Asheville, the last that, that I heard the count was over 200. And they had like a thousand people missing, but they had found 500, thank goodness, that they had found that many and they were still looking for some who had still been declared as, as missing. So, you know, praying, hoping that, that those people are found. Such a level of destruction there. I don't understand everything about weather, but from what I was listening to, it had something to do with how much water, I don't have to look all this up. You might can look it up too. But something to do with how much water 
was carried in in the hurricane. I mean, is that, that how that happens? And and by the time it got to where they were, it was just dumping massive amounts of water in into their area, causing the, I guess, the ponds and the rivers and all of those areas to flood on those poor people. Hope I just colored that right. Looks like I did. But you know, causing all that water to dump and those areas to flood very rapidly because they, they weren't expecting this either. We just did not know that what was headed our way. We knew it was headed our way, but we just, it, you know, it wasn't supposed to hit here, so we weren't really prepared. We thought we were having maybe a tropical storm with possibly a lot of rain, maybe some wind, but nothing like what we got. I think the wind was projected to be anywhere from maybe 15 to 45 miles per hour. And we had winds of over 100 miles per hour. So it was very, very, very frightening. And I actually believe that a tornado possibly touched down in our backyard because we have an area that you can see it was like a pathway where where something came through and um, one of the trees I may include some pictures at the end of that also but one of the trees in our yard or from my neighbor's yard. I don't have a lot of trees, but my, my neighbor has quite a few trees and you know, that she can't help what happened, but she has quite a few trees. And so this one tree that, that came over into our yard, um, it actually split, the part that was left, it actually split into a cross. So we have pictures of that and then my neighbor across the road from us, she had a huge tree that fell in her yard and, um, and the part that was left behind in her yard or the part that was still standing, I'll say still standing, it also split into a cross. And then I have a shed in my backyard that is probably, gosh, that thing is probably 30 years old. And my father had given it to my mother. And when she moved to, after my father passed away, she couldn't live where she was living anymore um, because she was so, you know, so many memories there of my dad. And, um, and so she moved into this house that I'm living in now that she sold to me later because she wanted to move back to some property that we have. And um, and so that shed that he had given her, that she left here with me, four of those trees hit that shed. And I really believe that that shed could have been some of what kept those trees from, from being tossed into our house and possibly even on our roof. So I'm actually thinking of writing a short story about it and calling, calling my short story The Shed because that night my father came to me in a dream and he was writing and I had not even seen all of the damage yet. I didn't even realize that that shed had kept those trees. I could go back there and see trees down, 
but they didn't realize that the shed was what had kept the trees from coming possibly into into our roof and in, into our house and so I might write a short story that talks about that but anyway he he was in a four-wheel drive and he drove through my back fence and came and he was riding through and on the back of his black four-wheel drive he had a brand new building that he, that he was pulling and he was just waving at me from the window and my nephew um, was sitting in the back passenger side and he was smiling and waving and I couldn't see who else was in the vehicle but later when I walked into my in the dream when I walked into my dining room um, my brother was in the in the dining room my other baby brother that that's still here um, we're, we're very close in age but he was sitting in my dining room smiling and talking um, my nephew had come in he was smiling and talking my mother had come in also and then my father was also in my dream and was smiling and talking and had actually been the one to bring the new building to me. And I just believe that's symbolic of his building that he had given to my mother all those years, of, years ago, taking the brunt of most of that wind and holding those trees back. And I never realized it, but those metal buildings that we buy, um, they are actually, and you know, some people make tiny homes out of them. And I've been thinking about doing that, making a tiny home on my property. And, um, but those melting metal buildings, they come as hurricane grade level so that they, they take a lot of wind. You'd be surprised. And that, that little building certainly took a huge brunt of what was going on out there, which was just horribly frightening. Okay, so I'm looking at this now and I kind of need to reassess it a little bit. So I've colored this light green here and then I need to see what color I want in this, maybe this area. I thought I had kind of chosen all that, but I'm not quite sure. I think the color that I want for that I think I'm going to choose this G05. Let me see if I yeah, I already had that out. So that must have been kind of what I was looking at anyway. So I'm going to go up here and start maybe outlining a little bit where I want this color. Yeah, that's pretty. Outline all in here. This looks like tree swag to me. So we lost all of our food in this thing because we don't have a generator. And, you know, we kept hoping that the lights would come back on because I think everything in your freezer will, will last for about three days. Well, we waited and we waited and the lights never came on. And then, you know, after the fifth day we knew, we knew that the food was gone in our freezer and so many other people lost their food in Georgia and probably in these other places too. And we know that we're lucky that, you know, that we're, we're alive. We're lucky for that, but it is kind of hard to lose 
all of your food that you've kind of built up and bought up and all that kind of thing. So probably for us, and I don't know for other people, it's probably even more than this, but we probably lost about $300 out of our freezer. And then we probably lost another $100 out of our refrigerator that we finally just had to, to throw out. So still not really happy about that, but we built it up the first time. So I guess we're gonna have to work on building it up again. I mean, we have some insurance that will cover it, but I mean, we have a thousand dollar deductible, so it's not gonna co cover everything, unfortunately. Like I say, there are others, there are others who lost much more sadly than than even that very sad for them and some people lost their lives in this thing now this looks like I may have to do some different kind of shading in here because it's I know that I see different gradations of colors in here but it's not the way these outlines are it looks like all of this is outlined in one color I'm not sure of the reason but I'm just gonna have to do the best I can here Just have to see what happens. So what I'll do is color this in. Um, sorry, I have a, a stuffy nose this morning. So some of this may be a little lighter and a little darker. Let's see what color this is. This is a G17. I kind of like that look too. Maybe even better than the one I have right here. And I had taken it out initially. So I think I'm just gonna start up here coloring this in and see. where this goes. I like to do a little edge. I don't like to color all the way to the edge. I have somewhere I have colored all the way to the edge, but I just don't like the effect of that. So I like to do a little edge. Kind of like, kind of like the edge here. I go a little bit further over. I'm re-outlining this a little bit with this different color. I think I like it a little better. I think it blends in with the other color I used a little better. And it's going to be pretty anyway. And then it winds up being also your own piece of art because yours winds up being a little bit different. Of course, it's going to be some different. So this does blend in a lot better, I think. 
And I actually really like this color for what I'm doing here. We've been dealing with insurance and we actually had no internet either. So we, we could not even file reports or anything for about 12 days. Our schools were shut down. And you know, I'm a teacher. So our schools were shut down. So we've had to redo our calendars and Work with our students because they're traumatized. I'm traumatized too. There's something very sombering and surreal when you are traveling through your neighborhoods and, and you just see every other house is, has trees in the roofs of the houses and more than one tree to the point that that these houses are basically destroyed as if as if as if there's been a war so very surreal and we know that that our students are feeling that also so we try to go in and talk with them and make sure that that they're doing okay and let them know that we have services available for them with internet and computers and things that they might need to continue the things that they need to do for their courses and personally I've, I've slowed my class down a little bit so that they have a little more time to work on their assignments. Cause this, when you're traumatized, it's hard to concentrate on anything, especially when it's work related and intense work. So that's what we've been trying to work with for them. Help them a little bit. To help them get through it and help them to, to get better and until life gets back to some, some kind of normalcy. When you don't have um, power for 14 to 20 days, and internet to do the things that, that we normally do for work, and some people actually, that's the kind of work they do. They, they work from home on the internet and then I have online students who work from home to do their studies. And so of course that affects them and everything that they do for the way that they're normally used to being able to do it. And so for quite a long time, you know, after these things had happened, I mean, none of us could even get online and find out how our family members were or friends or anything. And we 
had lost phone service and so that's that's pretty hard to be sitting there worried about your family and you just can't get in touch with anyone because you don't have any service and then I know we were having to ride around after a few days we were having to try to run around and find places where we could go in and actually charge our phones so that we could use them for the little bit that that we were able to because what I noticed would happen is we would get our phones charged at these different places that would let us and then we would spend the rest of the time running our batteries down trying to get service when we didn't have any. So this is working out nicely. I like the way it's looking. We couldn't get news about what was going on in our communities. We didn't know if there was another hurricane trying to come through because there had been one forming in the Gulf. And it did form and unfortunately it wound up coming through and hitting Florida. and doing significant damage there also. And they thought it was gonna hit Tampa Bay and the way that Tampa Bay is, the way I understand it now, and I may not be exactly right with this, but Tampa Bay is built in such a way that if it had hit Tampa Bay head on and they thought that it was going to up until very close to the time that it did hit, there would have been a, a great loss of life, significant loss of life there due to the millions of people who live there and the way that the bay is, there would have been significant damage where it hit somewhere else in the area, those areas, from what I understand, are fortified to be able to take the, the damage that hurricanes inflict on places. hurricanes have been happening in these places for a very long time. Even when Christopher Columbus was coming to the Americas, there were, he had to weather a hurricane because the governor of, I believe Hispaniola, he and Christopher Columbus had had a huge falling out and um, and he would not let Columbus, even though there was a hurricane coming in, he would not let Columbus come in and put down anchor, you know, where, where he was. And I believe it was Hispaniola at the time. And, um, and so hurricane, I mean, Columbus and his men they had to weather the hurricane in those ships. So hurricanes have been wreaking havoc for a very, very long time, even longer than before Christopher Columbus.
but this is something that I've never seen in Georgia in my lifetime, and I'm I'm in my 60s, so I've been here for a little while anyway, and um, I've never seen anything like this in Georgia. Not ever. I think I outlined some of this not quite right, but we're going to go with, with what I have here and work it out the best we can. That's what you have to do. Some of these lines can be hard to follow. I tried to get them the best that I can. I'm not sure about these places right here, what I need to do there. I'm not even seeing really the lines drawn in here for that. So it looks like if I had that, this is somewhere around this tree and this purple aspect, right, or this purple right here. I know these are green. This might be a little yellowy color all in here. Okay, so here, I think I'm just gonna keep coloring this in here because I'm just not sure some of this other out later. Even if I have to fill in with, you know, maybe a few different colors that, that I just want to put in there. So ironic to be coloring trees after all the trees that, that I've seen down this week in Georgia. I never realized that could be so afraid of trees that I've always thought were so beautiful and now sort of looking around different places and seeing maybe what trees need to be cut back maybe even the tops of them taken out so that they can't fall and cause any more damage and what that does to the skyline and I mean, we have skylines that have changed in our yard that we can actually see the skylines where we couldn't see them before and because of the trees missing and also wondering how that's going to affect bird life. We love to watch the birds here. We have tons of hummingbirds that come every year and blue jays and bluebirds and cardinals and, you know, wondering how all of that's going to, to be affected by the, the missing trees. 
but then also wanting to make sure that that we remain safe and that nothing like this ever has. I'm gonna draw some lines in here because for whatever reason, this really didn't kind of work out the way I thought it was going to here. And I may, I don't know, I may color, I may wind up coloring some of that in too. I just don't know yet. I couldn't get the lines to work out quite the way I think they were drawn in the book. But it still looks pretty. I have to take my darker color and go in and do some shading in here. Filling in and shading and seeing what I missed here because I'm obviously missed something since these lines didn't work out quite the way they are in the book, but still pretty. I think I'm going to leave that like that for right now, and then I think that. Maybe some of this is more of a yellowy green in here. So let me see if I can find a yellowy green. That's kind of a yellowy green. In fact, it's called Glitter Limelight. But it might be more this Glitter Firefly. I don't know which one it is. I think I'm going to go with the more yellowy one, the Glitter Firefly. That's Geo 3. Let's see if I have that over here. I do have that out already. So I'm going to use that. This looks like it goes up into, into this tree here, but I don't know. I know this is yellowy, so I'm going to start down here and just work my way up. Yeah, I like this color. This is nice. I think that's a good representation of what that looks like. that all in there. Up in there. Yep. Up in here. So that looks nice. Um, this looks like it might be that yellowy color. I mean that yellowy kind of green. Okay, let's see if I see anything else up here. See, these I have to be careful because some of these will be possibly this yellowy color, but some will be blue. So you can see the blue and white spaces, so I don't know. I'll have to work that out later. Okay, these are gonna be a darker green in here. So at least we've gotten that, and then, let's see if I see anything over here. I think I'm gonna color these little places here that are like light coming through and it's in the green so this is a green color 
I don't know, I think I'm gonna do that in the G04. See if I can find that as G. Got the G03, so here's the G04. I'm just gonna keep that there for a minute. And then I think I'm gonna color these. No, that didn't work. I don't know. I don't I don't think that's light enough. So let's go back to doing this the yellowy. I think that just looks better. It gives more highlight. It looks more more light light or more like light. Yeah, I think that looks better. That's more of a contrast that that I think we need right there. So this is the G04. No, this is the G03. Sorry about that. Um, the G03 Firefly. I bought this set, I guess, several months ago, and um. I've loved it so much that I recently bought my daughter a pack of these for her birthday. Now I've bought a pack of them to keep on my desk. <laughs> and then I bought, and with each of these, each of these packs, you get a refill. Let me see the refill. So you get a refill. And then, but I use very heavily the lightest blue that they have in the pack. And so I bought a set of the refills because you can buy the refills by themselves too. Now what I would love if, is if I could just buy the single colors because I would probably buy an entire set of just the blues so that I can use that that for my sky because I use that a lot for my sky, for the colors that I use for the sky. I can't remember what I decided I would do here. I think I'm gonna color it that stone color. I think that's what I want to do there. Sometimes I have to go back and, you know, fill in these colors that I was using because I hadn't quite made a decision of what I wanted to do somewhere. So I believe this is that G47, it is. And so I just wanna go ahead and fill that in. I might as well do that. Just fill that in and get that out of, out of my way here. And that'll be something completed there. This is another color I use a lot. You can see it's almost empty. I don't think I've filled it with a replacement yet though. And I have a couple of those that, that I can fill in when I run out. But I use this a lot for walkways. I use this a lot for the stone in the houses. Because these are cottages, so they're you know they're made out of stone. And so this is a nice stone color for that. I usually use these bright greens a lot. So yeah, that looks nice. That's the color that I wanted there. Let's see what I can do like with this stone is I can color the whole house in this color and then go back in like your oranges and your darker colors. I can just kind of go over some of the places in that color. And so I have, if you look here, I have some lighter stone colors here so that's gonna be that right here these are steps so i can fill that in while i've got this out i can fill that in and this in so these are the steps and then you'll notice in this section this section is a darker color and that makes the step stand out like it's supposed to same here. I've already filled that in. Okay, so I've got this done. So now I want to get this darker green that I had. Let's see, what darker green was I going to use? I believe it was this G44. Is this 
snip G, that's G17. I had a G, here's the G44. So this is that G44, and I like to use this for those darker accents in the greens, because it's still showing green, and you can see it enough that it's it's not, I have one that, that I was using, and it's almost like a black, but I like this for, for these accents. So G44, so you can see that I have that here, right? I have that darker color. So I'm gonna start working this here. It's a really nice, pretty, pretty green. As an accent. And it's dark enough that it goes over here, but I want a darker color here. I don't want to use my green. I know they, they're using that darker color there, but I want to use a different darker color for my steps. So I have this and I'm working it in. It's really nice. So that worked out really pretty. And then let's see if I have any, any darker colors over here. Well, I have this out. Looks like I have some dark coloring in here. But I don't know exactly yet where I want to fill that in. So I'm going to hold back on that for right now. Um, there is some dark shading in here, even though I have colored this green. So I want to just put a little shading in here with this. In between these, these flowers. Up in here, maybe some. Down in here. Maybe in here. Just gives it that shaded effect that that we're needing right there. That's the great thing about starting with a light color. If you start with a dark color, I mean, it'll still be pretty, but there's, you know, there's not a lot you can do once you color something dark. But if you start with a dark color, you can always work your way I mean, if you start with a light color, you can always work your way um, into shading some things later if you need to. So I see some dark shading in here. Shading in here, maybe in here. Maybe around these little red flowers a little bit. Which is where you would see some shading.
maybe a little bit in here. Okay, maybe some in here on these edges. these flowers and the edges a little bit over here Maybe in some places here. Down in here a little bit. In between the flowers again. See where it's giving it lots of accent in here. Just so pretty. Maybe some down in here. Maybe some down here at the bottom where we have this little outline here that I just basically filled it in all with. I filled it all in with that light green. So I'm just going to go back and outline a little bit. Bring the color in. Fix that little boo boo I just made. So you can see this is just a super beautiful shading color for foliage. It's that G44 in your Sioux colored glitter pens.
Okay, so all that pretty shading there. And then it looks like there, this might be a place where there is some shading up through all of these little, uh -oh. I don't want to smear that. It's still wet. I have to be a little bit careful with that because it will smear to different places, you know, in your painting that or drawing that you may not, you may not want that to be. So just in here between these flowers a little bit, I can see some shading and it's not really lined here for that, but you can see it when you look at it, that, that it's there. And then even in here a little bit, you can see it. So I just kind of fill it in there. Um, you know, look where the flowers are and see what you see. Just kind of eye it a little bit. So we see a little bit in here. And then we see some between these flowers. Go down to here. We see some a little bit down in here. We see some in here. Here. So, like I say, just, you know, beginning with these lighter colors and then leaving yourself the option to shade in places when, when you want to, when you feel like you need to. Here also, down into some of these little orange flowers. That's what I'm looking for. I use the flowers to kind of show me where I need shade. And so some of this goes down into here. And a little bit in here. Some of these lines can help you, but some of them you just kind of have to look at where the flowers are and where you're needing to put shading around those flowers. Okay, this looks like it's, there's some shading in here. shaded. I'm just going to outline that a little bit. I think it'll make it easier for me. I'm just coloring in circles and I'm also going up and down especially here because you know grass is up and down so I'm making a circular motion but it's kind of still up and up and down when I'm doing it
Okay, so that looks pretty good. And I think that maybe this looks like it might be shading. This looks like it might be shading. These are some little light white flowers. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to touch those. Might be a little shading in here. Okay, so I'm looking around where I might could see, where I might can see more shading here. This is going to take me a little minute to work out. Because I still have some red flowers to do in here. And some some light green, light green in there. So I want to have some time to work that out a little bit for how I want to do that. So you can see that we got quite a bit done today. We got the colors in the tree here and then we wound up doing the light green here for the, the light shading in the grass. Um, we wound up adding this so that we can make sure that that's that's there in the stonework. We also added the stone steps here. And then we started adding, I mean, we added the lighter yellowy green here. And then we also added a lot of shading that we have working our way down through the flowers and to the end there. And so what I wanna do the next time that that we come back to, to finish and work on coloring this. I thought we might finish today, but um, as you can see, we still have quite a bit to go. And so what I thought we would do is come back and maybe work out the stonework in our cottage. And then maybe the last bit of shading and greenery in this area. And then I also, you can see in the stonework where we need to fill in green patches. So this might take just one more coloring, but it also might take two, two more sessions. So when we come back, that's what we'll do. We'll work on the, the cottage first, and then we'll start finishing up these little smaller details that we need to complete before we complete the actual coloring. So thank you for coloring with me today, and I look forward to coming back and finishing this with you and um, at some point I will add pictures of the colorings that I did during Hurricane Helene and maybe even some of the pictures of some of the aftermath of Hurricane Helene so that you can see see what that looked like during the time that I was doing those colorings. But anyway, thank you and you guys have a blessed day. Bye-bye.